Hello, welcome back. Or if you're new, welcome. So I am going to read the first couple of verses in the Gospel of Thomas today. What I have decided to do, I'm going to start taking my notes that I take on scripture whenever something comes to me through revelation or and or um, I can take information from Neville Goddard's lectures based on his interpretations, based on his experiences, I can incorporate that too. Uh, and then if it makes sense to me, I can, um, I can share that. But uh, yeah, I think it's important to do that just in case there, there are other individuals out there, you know, going through their awakening process and they're, and they're reading scripture now and it's starting to make sense or the, it doesn't make sense to them and they don't know why it doesn't make sense. So, uh, so I'm going to start creating blog posts on scripture now. To add to anything I do on man, uh, mindset or manifesting or like mystical dreams, experiences, and revelation. So this particular uh, video, I created the blog post on it this morning. I took notes a few days ago, but then I created a blog post this morning. I actually recorded this video already, and then I did the blog post, and then I was like, you know what, let me come back and re-record this based on what I wrote. So... um. I wrote down that the, so the experience of awakening is a journey that is ever unfolding until the end. And the end means when one leaves the wheel of recurrence and it ends when we leave this physical garment behind and we live incorporated into the body of Christ in eternity. And part of that journey I now know includes the revealing of scripture and its true meaning. Uh, based on my experiences to date, uh, the revelations don't come all at once, um, but I'm gonna share what I know, what has come to me through revelation and experience. So uh, today I'm gonna share the first two verses, like I mentioned in the Gospel of Thomas. And the first verse is, and he said, whoever finds the interpretation of these sayings will not experience death. When I first read this, I, just like I find myself doing quite often now, uh, reading through novel's lectures, uh, through certain dreams and experiences I have, getting a little emotional because, well, it's just emotional realizing where I'm at on my journey now, right? Um, so anyway, many people view death in this physical world as the end to life, and it's not because the true death is a spiritual death, which means one lives on in eternity incorporated into the body of Christ, which is awakened humanity, personified as David um, and the Ancient of Days. So the Ancient of Days is one God made up of many gods, the sons of God, right? So the... So this particular verse, whoever finds your interpretation of these sayings will not experience death, is really saying that anyone who isn't able to interpret this scripture, this uh, scripture, not as the world interprets scripture. There have been many interpretations uh, on scripture, uh, but not as the world interprets it. Those who interpret it not having the experience, the experiences of uh, realizing that they are they are God. Every that God is in everything, in everyone, and we are having this human experience, right? As God, buried within man in this profound state of sleep, right? Most of the world doesn't understand that. Um, so anyone who can is able to interpret Scripture, not as the world interprets it, interprets it but one who has truly awakened, has come to the end of days, all right? And when death occurs in the physical body, will leave or will live in eternity and removed from the wheel of recurrence. We will not die this physical death and then uh, uh, exist in another world just like this and repeat the same 
patterns, right? Until we're finally off of that wheel. No, being able to interpret scripture, having certain experiences, um, according to scripture, things that Neville spoke about. Uh, so it's emotional for me because I, I realize now that I am in the end of days. There are still experiences that I haven't had according to scripture. Again, um, experiences that Neville talked about, but but I know that I am in the end of days because I'm I'm seeing these things, I'm seeing these other experiences happening that I know that are leading up to, uh, you know, the final experiences where I will be plucked from the wheel of recurrence, incorporated into the body of God, and live on in eternity. I have zero doubt, zero doubt. With the experiences that I've had, the understanding that I have, there's like zero doubt at this point. Um, so I believe that being able to interpret scripture comes by grace, just as receiving the promise comes by grace. Because not all awakened individuals are able to interpret scripture. There are a lot of individuals who are awakened and talk and talk about being awake but still don't understand scripture and still do not understand that they are god right or maybe have some inkling that yes this this is possible and we're all part of the same awareness but yet not uh not understanding scripture and not correlating the two all right uh, the second verse in the Gospel of Thomas states, Let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds. When he finds, he will become troubled. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished, and he will rule over all. All right, so in this particular verse, it means that the individual who truly seeks God until he finds him, finds him within himself, not an external God, finds him with God within self, will be troubled. And I can tell you that is true. It's true because when you find out that God is not an external being and uh, that, well, that's troubling because then you know God is within you. God is within every being in this world. God is in all and through all, right? So, there is, so you realize that everything is within. Um, you can't blame it on somebody else. So, um and then you realize you've been on this journey and that everything you experience, again, comes from within. There's no causation outside of self, none whatsoever. Um, and there's no one else to blame, okay? When you become troubled, you will find, or you'll finally wrap your head around it. And then, and then, yes, it's astonishing when you can finally grasp that there is no other causation um, and, the reality of who you really are that it is astonishing because you realize the control that you have over the circumstances of your life you truly begin to understand the journey and your true purpose and what the and what the end really entails and when you rule over all it means not that you're like, not that you're ruling over and you're commanding other people, right? Um, it means that you will learn to subdue yourself. You'll learn to subdue your thoughts. You become aware of everything uh, within and around you. And you begin to subdue yourself and cultivate beautiful, loving thoughts. And, and you you begin to bring yourself and others out of unwanted states and then your world really begins to change okay so that's what it means to uh to when it says uh you will subdue and rule over uh or and you will rule over all it's just as you subdue yourself um your your neg any like negative thoughts any unlovely thoughts that you may be used to uh, uncontrolled thoughts, you know, you, you start to become aware of them and, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's astonishing to be honest. So anyway, that is, 
uh, that is what I have to say about those two verses in the Gospel of Thomas. So thank you so much for joining me. I did create the blog post on it if you want to check out uh, the uh, check out my blog. And otherwise, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, if you want to comment below, please feel free to do so. I'm interested if uh, what you guys kind of think of where maybe you're at on the journey. If you have any questions, comments before, or for me, leave them down below and I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye.